Neo said to me one day, he said, what, you don't like money or something? And when he said it, at the moment he said it, I said, well, you think too much about money. In my head, I don't know if I said it to him. In my arrogance, I thought I was doing something noble by not wanting to make more money, which I realize is crazy because now I can, I can feed more people. I can hire more people. I can give people more opportunities. I went out and got a bunch of money and now I can teach other people how to do it on the podcast. I didn't want to just interview people, but I know some stuff. So that's why me and Donnie get together and I get to teach the stuff that I know and I don't ask you for a dime. I had to go get the money, but I wasn't even money motivated. I wasn't driven by money. So I had to get around people who are driven by money to at least make me want it a little more. My mind starts to think. So I got around some people. All they think is money. I needed to be around that. Some of you guys are so good at what you do and it's all for the arts. I so wish, I so hope that some of my artists and my creatives get around some people who only think about money. Because you as an artist or a creative, you're just so into the art and you love the art and your fulfillment comes from the art. And I'm cool with that. But once you get around people who only think about money, you're dangerous. You're dangerous. Because now you'll be thinking, how can I make this art make money? So I got around that. 7.45 a.m. Catch me on the morning meetup. Hosted by David Shane's. So I just want to go through my story a little bit on how I got rich. And it's not, a, it's not a, I'm not going to like, it's not just going to be story stuff. Uh, some of my story you've heard or you read my book, but um, there are very specific things as I sat down last week and I was thinking about this title, you know, thinking about this call today. I was like, man, so many things happened, especially from the time when I wasn't really thinking that it was possible for me, or I felt like financial success was this, um, I like this example, like a gated community. Like you just can't get in unless somebody like gives you some money or you get lucky. Because there were so many things in the world that would prevent me from getting my background, my education, the fact that I don't have certain connects, I don't have any real, ta I didn't have any real talents. When I was rapping, I did a little bit, but I'm talking about when I was working at the Cheesecake Factory, I didn't have any real skill sets or talent. So hopefully today inspires you wherever you are in your life financially, wherever you are in your life in terms of like your career path or you have a job, you're, you're an entrepreneur. Um, I, wanna, I wanna like just go through some very specific things that help me become, I guess, financially successful. Okay, y'all good so far? Is, is it all right that we talk about money? And I know, I know that success and rich even is not necessarily financial. But uh, I want to go through that story a little bit because I, I, I woke up one day, I was like, yo, I can't even, I can't even believe it. I can believe it because I actually did the things that I needed to be done. But back in the day, when you do the things that you think are going to help you succeed, it, it, it's not as effective and you start to feel that all of this thing is for all of it. It's for nothing. I was at my church yesterday and I had this, it wasn't a weed whacker, but it was like a long, y'all know, I'll, I'll do a whole lot of this. The only, the only like the stuff like this I do is at my church. Right. So where everybody comes together and everybody has something. So it's like this long chainsaw type thing and it cuts the hedges cut the hedges but we had we were in this uh, I, I don't even know what to call it but we had to cut down some of the, the 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 weeds tall tree stuff so i have the little machine and i'm whack actually my arm actually still hurts i'm hitting it like ah ah knocking down all these uh these tall grasses i don't know how to describe it but like i'm i'm I, i'm taking a little saw thing and i'm hitting that joint and cutting down the trees it wasn't trees, it was like tall grass, but it seemed like trees. And I began to get so tired and so exhausting because I'm like, ah, ah, and I feel like I'm doing something. But after, after a few moments of that, you get tired. You get exhausted. And then I looked at my brother, Eric, 
And he said, Eric, he said, uh, you know, do it a certain way. And he had so much patience with me and he's showing me how to do it. And I realized that if I do it the right way, then I'll get more done. It'll be less exhausting. But as I was just going at it, I'm just grinding on this thing. And eventually I get tired, I get burnt out. And then I look at the work that I did and I'm like, I ain't even do much. But I had someone to teach me, hey, do it this way. And then throughout the process of me doing it for an extended period of time, I'm like 15, 20 minutes in, I start to understand some things about this process. And it becomes easier and you find certain ways to be effective. Y'all know you do something for a long time, you start to you start to find better ways to be effective, even if nobody teaches you. If you do something for a long period of time, you become more effective with less work. Is anyone, is that anybody's testimony? Can anyone relate to that? And that's exactly what happened. The longer I did it, the less energy and the more effective, meaning I don't have to work as hard, but I get more done. I found a coach and I was just doing it for a long time, right? And I felt like that, I, I through this process, I saw my own entrepreneurial journey flash before my eyes. I'm like, yo, the longer you do something and if you find a coach, it becomes easier and more effective. The first thing I did when I was uh, working at the Cheesecake Factory, well, really before the Cheesecake Factory, really, it was like my Olive Garden security job day. So I was working them both. The first thing I did was uh, I began to dig into personal development. Now, this seems, I, I hate to start with mindset and I hate to start with this, but this is where it started. This is why I'm so passionate about the book club because this is the thing. And I know, I know y'all want bars, and y'all want tutorials, and y'all want the courses. You want the master class, you want the mastermind. But this is where it started for me. It started with personal development. Every car ride, I'm listening to personal development. I stopped listening to music. Every moment I had alone, I made decisions that would feed my mind. If I'm at home, instead of just playing on YouTube or just watching TV, I would, I would learn something. I watched Jim Rohn videos over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. That's all I would listen to. I would listen to Jim Rohn and Zig Ziglar. And I began to get addicted to this stuff. And it changed the things that I did. Oh, actually, in this book, hold on. Oh, wow, this is good. One of the highlights from this book, uh, The Science of Getting Rich, page 24, it says, a man or a woman's way of doing things is the direct result of the way he thinks about things. A man's way of doing things is the direct result of the way he thinks about things. The way I was doing things is a direct result of the way I was thinking about things. But what affects the way you think about something? What affects the mindset? I try to stay away from even using the word mindset because it's so cliche and I hate that mindset is so cliche because that's the whole game. That's somebody just put it in the chat, the whole game, not part of the game, not a piece of the game. It's the whole game mindset. I'm telling you, I so wish you guys could like really, really grasp this concept. It's the whole game. There's there is no other game being played. The way you look at things. The way the way you see it is a. Your results are the way are, are a direct result of the way you've done a certain thing, your activity. But your activity is driven by the way you think about things. So if you are not thinking that personal development is important, you are not going to personally develop, meaning you're going to do some other things. What's crazy is when I started to personally develop, when I started to read books and I started watching these motivational videos and listening to these motivational audios, what happened was the way I saw the people that I was hanging out with changed. I didn't change. They didn't change. What changed was what went in my head and what I saw. It's not like they're dressing differently. It's not like they started doing something else. The thing that they were doing on a consistent basis started to change in my eyes, the way I saw them. I never asked myself the question, why are we going to the club again? I just started to see it. It's so crazy. It's not like the it's not like the video that I watched or the the audiobooks or the books that I read said 
don't hang out with your friends. It's not like they, it's not like the book said, do not go out and drink. Do not be chasing the ladies out. It, it didn't say that. The books just started to teach me about my mindset and what I'm doing with my money. And I started to see money differently. Whatever you're pouring into your brain will create the way you think and the way you think affects what you do and what you do affects your results, period. For all the people that get up every single morning, Monday through Friday, I'm telling you, I don't know if it, I don't know if you even notice it, but you may not notice it the first week. That's why some people may join and then quit the first month because you came a couple of days and you didn't get a chance to have your mindset be changed because now the morning meetup is fighting with whatever you do at nine o'clock. So if you do, if, if you're on this call, let's say twice a week, but you're around negative influences and you're on Instagram all day, five days a week on the shade room, on spiritual world, on YouTube, just looking at videos, this call is not necessarily going to help you because it's too, it's too big of a fight. The information that Brent is giving you or all the other speakers are giving you, we can't, we can't fight against all the stuff that you're putting in your brain on a regular basis. Every day, all day. So what happened was, as I started to like personally develop, I, the way I started approaching my job was different. So for some reason, it was okay if I had an evening shift. Let's say my evening shift starts at 3 o'clock. It was okay to get there at 3.10. Why? Because as a server, I'm just taking over another server section. And typically, that server has some other tables. Or they had the table and it, was, it began to like be a situation where I get there and I got to wait for my first table because the person that I'm relieving, they still have their table. So I'm just sitting around. So 305, 310, not that bad. But as I started personally developing, as I started reading books and I started to block out some of the nasty noise that was going on, going on in my head, I had to be there early. It wasn't whether I was going to sit around or not. It wasn't about whether I could make more money or not. It wasn't about even me keeping my job by being on time. I started to get frustrated if I was late because I'm learning that I want to be a better person. So the way I saw my job, the way I saw cutting corners at your job, how many thought in the chat, how many people you cut corners at your job? You know your job. You know it. Like there's certain things that you can do and get away with. We're going to keep it on it. There, there's certain corners that you can cut and everything will be okay. It's crazy as I started reading books and listening to audios and attending conferences and events, the way I looked at cutting corners changed. I did not want to cut corners. I wanted, I wanted to do things the way they were supposed to be done. Not because I was going to get better tips, but because I am a person that wants to be a better person, period. So I decided that I wanted to be a better person. That was the first thing to help me get rich. I didn't see it back then. I didn't, I didn't, know, I didn't know that that was going to be the thing. But hindsight, looking back, that was it. That's where it was. Okay, the next thing, I started working really, really hard and I took all the all that personal development stuff and put it into action. This is now, you, you, you may be learning and growing and you got bars for days. And if I look at your Instagram, it's very motivational. Clearly, you are personally developed. But then I realized that I was, I was in a motivational mode where I'm telling people positive things and I'm inspiring my friends or I'll say yo I'm not going out this weekend I'm about I'm not I'm not going to spend no money with y'all I'm about to go I'm about to be in the house working on my business and the working on my business part is subjective that's the word that I'm looking for Working on my business looked like this. 
I I would I would come up with like certain design concepts <clears throat> and I make a list of them and then I'd be done. And I just do other stuff. Or I do like busy work. I'd be fold folding my t-shirts. I would be posting on Twitter or Facebook. I'll shoot videos. But that wasn't making me a dollar. It wasn't making me money. I actually had to take all this personal development stuff and actually go be active. It's the activity, which is different. Personal development, the way you're looking at things, it's easy to say, I'm not going to hang out with this negative crowd. It's easy to say, okay, I'm not about to just get drunk all the time. It's easy to say, all right, I'm going to watch these videos. What's, e what's more difficult is actually going to do the work that is going to help you make some money. I'm telling you, some of you are personally developed. You get it, right mindset. But if you look at the activity that you're doing, none of this stuff moves the needle. Anybody guilty? Am I talking to anybody before I pass this co collection plate? Am I talking to anybody? We know it's busy work. None of this stuff makes money. But we feel good because we're, we're doing the right things. And we're looking at the right things as not the negative things. So we're, we're not doing negative things. So we think we're on the path to success. Maybe. Maybe. Without that activity, without actually going to grind, without going to make some money, your business is not going to move. I'm glad, like, I'm glad you don't yell at people in traffic anymore because you've been reading and personally developing. I'm so glad that you're not wasting time doing things that don't matter at all, but you're wasting time doing things that matter a little bit. It's tough to get out there with a box of t-shirts, especially me. I am, believe it or not, I am an introverted extrovert. So if I don't know if you understand a disc assessment, I'm a 99I, but I'm also a 99C, meaning I'm very calculated. I, around the people that I'm around, I rock with y'all. I am, I am extroverted to the max. I love other human beings. But if I get in an environment where I'm not comfortable and I don't know anybody, and I feel like someone's going to have something to say about me that I can't hear, like in their mind, they're judging me, that's tough for me. So for me to take a box of T-shirts on my off day and to walk into a barbershop where I don't know anybody or even I know one person, but there's eight other barbers. And I, in my head, I think they in here like, yo, look at Hustle Man over here. I don't want them shirts. That's the thing I'm thinking in my head. So for me to walk into that barbershop or that salon or to go in an environment that's not familiar and try to sell somebody something, even though I've never, ever been a salesman like that, difficult. It's a challenge. But I had to take that personal development stuff and do the stuff that is going to make me some money. So what I did was I found out my numbers and focused on consistent growth. I found out my numbers, all the numbers, how much money I was making, what are my expenses, how much, am I, how much am I spending? How much money am I wasting? How much money I made last week? Now I can base, I can, I can bank that against what I'm going to make this week. So I set a goal based on last week's goal. It was consistent growth. If I sold 10 t-shirts, as long as I sold 11 the next week, I'm happy. Now my goal is 20, but I sold 11. At least I beat last week. I just focus on consistent growth. That's it. Consistent growth. Just this whole year, I've been focused on beating last year. Let me tell you, last year, really good year as an entrepreneur. This year, there are a lot of entrepreneurs that aren't doing as good as they did last year. But I understood that they wasn't putting no more money in the economy. And I said to myself, I have to beat last year. If I don't beat last year, last year was luck. The economy boom. If I don't, if I don't beat last year, it was luck. So every month, every day, like I'm, I'm thinking back, I'm thinking, how can I beat last year? What's really, really cool is I already beat last year. But it wasn't, it wasn't because of luck. It wasn't because of I got some sort of endorsements or I got some sort of cosigns. It was me identifying the numbers, finding out where I am, where I was, and how am I going to get further.
Some of us are just winging each month and we just, it, it, it's up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, because you don't have any control over your numbers. You don't know where you are. You don't know where you've been. And it's really, really hard to identify where you're going. So while I'm working at the Cheesecake Factory, my goal is to be better every single month. I had a whole notebook, like writing down how much, not just in business, tips. What are my tips this week? What are my tips next week? What are my tips the week after that? And I have, look, I got months of that stuff. And I started calculating everything, the tips, my expenses, how much I'm spending, everything. I started do documenting everything because you cannot grow what you can't measure. You can't. There's no way to grow something that you're not measuring. So I'm asking you guys to be smart business people. Start to identify where you are. Do you know what you made last month? Do you know what you made last week? How are you going to do a little more? I don't care. I don't care if it's a little bit more, but you got to do more. Because a little bit more compounded equals a lot more. Is this making sense? If it's making sense, just throw it in the chat. I got you. That's what I got you. I set a quit number while I'm working at my job. I set a quit number. And I said, when I make a certain amount of money every single month for the next three or four months, I forgot what it was. It was like three or four months consistently, then I'll quit. But if I don't do it consistently, I don't quit. This is, this is the path of me setting goals. I'm just telling you. And then eventually I took all my, all my money and I just opened the kiosk. I took all my money. I just kept betting on me. Listen, there's times I take all my rent money or all my ele electric bill money and I'll put it into T-shirts and then I go get it back. And that process, that cycle just never stopped. It just never stopped. I uh, go make some money and then I buy more T-shirts, bigger, bigger amount. And then now I got to sell them. I got to be uncomfortable in these barbershops and asking my friends to buy and be it on Twitter. I'm, I'm super uncomfortable at this point, but I got to do it because I got more and more shirts and they're piling up in my living room. I don't know if anybody here, if any of my friends are here that ever remember coming to my house in my living room full of T-shirts. That was me taking everything I had, putting it in. The process hasn't changed. That the, the podcast studio, I got no loans. Cat, building, building a building out. There was just four walls, dirt floor. If you see it now, no ceiling, nothing, everything paid, cash, no loans, no credit, nothing, cash. I'm willing to take everything I got and put it into something else. Listen, I'm willing to do it again. I'm looking at buildings now. I'm like, I got too much cash. I need to put it into something. Let's go. I'm taking it all, all of it. I'm going to build another one. We just opened the first one. I'm about to, I'm, I'm looking for, now actively looking for another one, a bigger one. This was 3750 square feet. I need 12,000. I need 15,000. But the process started with me betting on myself saying I'm paying I'm putting everything I got into this thing and I'm going to make I'm going to sell the stuff that I got cuz I got to get my money back. And then I took all my money, opened the kiosk. I had no money the day day one I had no bread. Opened my kiosk in the mall. I took everything. $2,000 uh, deposit, $2,000 first month rent, and then I got to stock the whole thing. I had no money, none, day one, which gave me the motivation to keep working. Then I took all my money and opened a store in South Dakota. That one, I don't want to go through that story, but I, I just want to share with you some of the things that helped me. This is how I got rich. Okay, number three, man, I got, I, I did at some point, I got stuck in like incremental growth so I'm working, trading time for, I'm just working, grinding. It looks really, really good, but I'm not as successful as I seem online. I'm not as successful as I seem online. It looks good though, because I'm selling shirts and I'll take a picture of the shirts, but I, it was just a grind and I'm tired and I have to wake up the next morning and I have to work and I have to wake up the next morning and I have to work. I made a post on Twitter and I'll probably, I'll post it on uh, Instagram at some point when I feel comfortable because I don't want people to take it wrong. But I hope you make enough money to be able to spend more time with your kids. Right now, you don't make enough money to spend time with your family. 
I understand. But some of you need some financial goals so that you can spend more time with your family. Because you don't make enough. You got to keep working because it's not, especially it's not passive. I work, I make money. I work, I make money. I don't work, I don't make any money. Once I saw that, once I saw that, I said, this has to stop. Even speaking, I stopped doing speaking gigs for a minute because I have to go speak, even if it's five, ten thousand dollars at this point. That's a lot of money. But I said, I got to come up with another way because I will soon spend this ten thousand. I will soon spend this five grand in the speaking gig. I got to figure out it, it's got to be bigger. It's got to be bigger. I want to make enough money to where I don't have to do anything if I don't want to for months, for years. Imagine that. I've never even seen that before. Not in my circle of friends. Never saw it. I hope, my, my, like, my hope for you is that you make enough money to be able to spend more time with your family. I was sitting there yesterday, Sunday evening. I go to the gym, then I go to my church and do some working, and then I'm sitting on the couch. My whole family's around. I'm sitting there with my daughter, and I said, wow, the first time I actually felt successful. I don't know why. This is, I'm, I mean, this successful. I just, I was like, yo. And I had to tweet it real quick. I'm like, I get a chance to sit here with my daughter and chill. These should be the goals. But I got stuck in the, the work. We're making money. We're making money, but... I have to work so hard for it. So this is not rich. This is this is just you. You're making a bunch of money. You don't get no time to do nothing with it. So that was a challenge. So I had to get around what I'm not. Let's take this note. You have to get around what you're not. I am not financially driven. I'm not money driven. Everything I do doesn't have to be about money. And that's not what I am. And some of you may look at that and say, whoa, that's noble, when really it's stupid. Especially if I have the talent and the ability and I have the dream and a vision to help a lot of people, I need to go get a lot of money. But I'm never even going to think about that unless I'm around some people that are money motivated. Some of my friends are super money motivated. All you talk about is money. And you're going to think to yourself, because you went to church this weekend, I don't ever want to be that. Well, I wasn't that. But as soon as I got around that, it started to tip the scale a little bit more. I just started thinking about making money a little bit more. I started thinking about it differently. And I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. I never, yo, Neo said to me one day, he said, would y'all like money or something? And when he said it, at the moment he said it, I said, well, you think too much about money. That's what I said. In my head, I don't know if I said it to him, but in my arrogance, I thought I was doing something noble by not wanting to make more money, which I realize is crazy because now I can, I can feed more people. I can hire more people. I can give people more opportunities. I went out and got a bunch of money and now I can teach other people how to do it on the podcast. I didn't want to just interview people, but I know some stuff. So that's why me and Donnie get together and I get to teach the stuff that I know and I don't ask you for a dime. I had to go get the money, but I wasn't even money motivated. I wasn't driven by money. So I had to get around people who are driven by money to at least make me want it a little more. I don't smoke. I don't smoke weed, right? But when I get around people that smoke weed, I often think to myself, you know what? I did have a pain in my shoulder and they said that weed is medicinal. I, I mean, it's good. Some some people, it's good. It's good for them. Let's say. The more I get around, that's the only time I have those thoughts is when I'm around those people. So I actually moved closer and closer to like hit, hitting that joint one time. You know what I mean? The more I'm around people, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. I was just I was, it was the other day like this. 
Never mind. Y'all just all this judgment. I'm not. I'm. I'm not. Just out out here blowing it down. <laughs> but at least my mind starts to think. My mind starts to think. So I got around some people. All they think is money. I needed to be around that. Some of you guys are so good at what you do, and it's all for the arts. I so wish, I so hope that some of my artists and my creatives get around some people who only think about money. Because you as an artist or a creative, you're just so into the art and you love the art and your fulfillment comes from the art. And I'm cool with that. But once you get around people who only think about money, you're dangerous. You're dangerous. Because now you'll be thinking, how can I make this art make money? So I got around that. Also, another thing that I did is I leaned into an industry. I leaned into an industry. I had to stop. I had to stop uh, being a um, a serial entrepreneur and thinking it's cool. So people ask, hey, what do you do? I'm an entrepreneur. What do you do? I do this and I do that and I do this and I do that. And there are some people that even tell me that and they think it's cool. And I'm looking at you like, yo, you're crazy, bro. Typically, typically, when someone comes to me like that, in my mind, automatically, I think broke. I, I, that's just the first thing that comes to my mind. Not successful in any of the stuff you told me. Not for all people. There, there are certain levels, right? Because I do a lot of stuff. But when I introduce myself, what do y'all think I introduce myself as? I'm a podcaster. I have a podcast. That's it. I don't do nothing else. I don't do no real estate. I don't do no coaching. I don't do no workshops. I don't do challenges. I'm not a marketing arm for these other businesses. I am a podcaster. I want you to know that I do podcasting and I lean into it so heavily. It's great. Yo, it's, it's wild. So I start calling myself a podcast and I start teaching podcasts and I start doing podcast workshops. One day guy comes up to me, yo, I need four hours of your time to teach me podcasts. I give you 25,000. Bet, let's do it. I went in and teach because this is the thing that I've been engulfed in. And after it was done, he said, yo, this was so valuable. Amazing. And an organization I'm uh, flying out to LA for right now, they want me to teach them podcasting. It's a five-figure monthly contract for me to teach them podcasting and for them to meet up and get into schools and teach the kids podcasting because I'm leaning so far into the industry. I want you to know me for this one thing, not as an entrepreneur. I interview entrepreneurs. I interview successful people. I just ask good questions. That's it. That's it. I had to lean into it. But y'all don't lean into anything or the thing that you're leaning into is so broad. I do credit. What the heck is that? You have to lean into something. Once I lean, so listen, I'm talking about once I leaned into the podcasting space, 5X income. Only because I want to be branded by, I want to be branded as such. Because when you're branded as something, when someone else is talking about you to someone else, they're going to say this one thing, and that thing spreads. I'm telling y'all, for all my people that are in uh, financial literacy, you better lean into something. You better lean into something. Do me a favor. How many people do you know that are in credit or in financial literacy? How many people you know? A million. So when you say, I teach financial literacy, I'm trying to help you understand how people are looking at you. You got to pay attention to what's going on. It's an industry where you can make so much money and it's quick. You just like learn the game and, and it's a need, which is dope. But if you're not like a heavy marketer, if you don't understand like how to brand yourself, and how to get other people results in terms of like, if you're not like owning the space like 500 has, 
You better lean into something. You better have some sort of gimmick. I'm just, I'm just telling you. You better lean into something specific that other people can talk about and not bat you in with everybody else. Okay. I leaned into, uh, next Next thing is, I focused on uh, audience leveraging, affiliates and collaborations. Leveraging audiences, meaning I need to get in front of other people's audiences and leverage that. The collaborations are powerful because if I can collaborate with somebody, I can have their audience. Now, I don't mind you guys being exposed to someone else. I don't, I don't mind that. I really don't. That's why I bring so many people on the call, bring so many people on the podcast. I, I'm always collaborating with somebody, always introducing you all to somebody else. Why? Because there's more where that came from. And you'll hang around me. You'll stay here to find out, whoa, I wonder who else Dave is going to bring to the table. I'm cool with that. However, when we collaborate, people also promote me, and I need to leverage that audience. Okay. How many people here in the chat found me through somebody else? You found me through somebody else. Stole it in the chat real quick. You didn't find me through searching me. You don't just stumble on me. Some, some people do because I put out a lot of content. Yes, you may, be, you may stumble on some of my videos because I put out a lot of content. But sometimes you're looking at somebody else who posted a clip of our podcast together on their page. And you're like, yo, well, who's this guy? I'm I'm leveraging audiences. Okay. But then we started getting into affiliates. So I'm saying, if I bring you to my audience and my audience buys, can I share in that profit? Of course. Of course. When y'all watch these podcast episodes, click the, if you're going to buy from that person, click the link in the description and use the code because that means I'm going to make money from that. I don't mind telling you all. I don't mind. Okay. Uh, yes. Also, um, I, I really focus on building an audience and building a platform. I wanted to be a person. I wanted to be a speaker and I want to travel and I want to like, I want, I want to speak on people's platforms. And then I thought to myself as I was not getting speaking gigs, what the heck is going on? Nobody's booking me. I'm going to book myself. That's the only reason I started doing my own events because nobody else was booking me. Nobody's booking me. So I'm going to book myself. I'm going to focus on building my own audience and building my platform so other people who want to speak will have to come to me and jump on my platform. That's my goal right now. But it didn't start with a big platform. It started with me doing entrepreneurship workshops in the state. That's why I went to Cal I went to Orlando. What was it Orlando? Florida, what was he in Tampa, Miami, somewhere? I don't know, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Went to Fort Lauderdale. And there's a um, there was a morning meetup meetup. And Tamika, and I don't know, she collaborated with some other people in the morning meetup, but she started, she started her own group, her own platform. There's mad people to get together on a regular basis. And I heard they're doing it in Texas, too, which we were just on the call. We were trying to figure out how we're going to work that out because I just need to come out. Y'all put it together. I'm going to be there. Help you build it. You build your own platform. Other people want to stand on it. You can charge people to get in front of your audience when you start le leaning into your audience. Last. Oh, gosh. Uh, I got to hurry up. Here's another one. Set bigger goals with better plans. Set bigger goals with better plans. Bigger goals, better plans. Throw it in the chat real quick. Bigger goals, better plans. Throw it in the chat real quick. Bigger goals, better plans. You need bigger goals and better plans. Your goals are so small and the plan that you have is trash. That's not going to work. You need bigger goals. You need a big goal, but you're not even going to come up with a big goal unless you're around big Thinking people, the environment is important. You're going to think that $100,000 is a big goal because you're around people who make 60. But if you get around people who are making 10, 20, 30 million, the big goal, 10 million doesn't seem that bad. Okay, let me show you something real quick. 
pocket. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but this is my uh, – you're not going to be able to see it like that, but this is this is the goal, right? 10,000 strong in the morning meetup. That's one part of the goal. Second goal, 10 million in 2022. The goal. You know where I got that from? Some of my friends said, put your goals on your page, on your screenshot, screensaver. And then we started thinking about bigger goals. I'm on the phone last night. No, not last night. Saturday night after church. And me and a few of my friends start coming up with a real plan to make a quick 15 to 30 million. Quick. I'm sitting, I'm, I'm sitting on this call and I'm like, yo, the fact that the the fact that the plan that we're coming up with in my mind seems like it's going to work is mind blowing. This is crazy. This is I'm, like this. I'm on the line with three other powerhouse entrepreneurs and we're strategizing 15 to 30 million. Big goal. But I said something in terms of the plan that everybody on the call shot down. <laughs> I'm coming up with this plan, and I and I actually I prefaced it with you guys might not like it. What the plan I proposed just wasn't good. It's not gonna get it done. Well, it would get it done, but it would be a lot more like labor and work that we have to do. And they all looked at me like, ah, eh, I don't know about that one, Dave. <laughs> Listen, my plan to make $100,000 was to walk store to store selling T-shirts. It's not a bad plan. It's not a bad goal, but I needed a bigger goal and a better plan. Is there a bigger goal than selling 11 T-shirts a day for 365 days? Yes, there's a bigger goal than that. It has to be. 100000 It's selfish because 100000 you can live well. 100,000 will not feed your entire family. I need a bigger goal and I need a better plan. Going to barbershops, my gosh, they try to make money already. Like I'm just, there's a better plan than that. There's a better plan than that. Can I do a, 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 a social media campaign? Can I go on a campaign, maybe? What can, I, what can I do to have a bigger goal, better plan? Keep refining the plan. Keep refining. I got some plans right now, but I'm always tweaking, trying to make sure this plan is bigger and better. Can this plan get bigger? Can this plan get better? I need a coach to look at my plan to see how my coach can make my plan better. So, which is why I think we're doing business audits on Friday. I just, I, I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to stretch you all to have a bigger goal. And then we're going to work on some better plans. But the plans that we've come up with was all based on the, the, the amount of information that we've received so far. The people I was on the line with, they been they keep going to maximize. They're spending two times as much as me in personal development. So they're, see, they're seeing it from a different perspective. Um, these are the things that contributed to me becoming successful. If you take a couple pieces out of what we talked about today, next year will look dramatically different for you and your family and your business. So look, I love you all and I want nothing but the best for you. I pray that you build a huge platform and you charge me to get on your platform. I hope that like, it's it's just your, your, your platform is so big that eventually I'm going to have to book you and I got to pay you a lot of money because you have so much influence. You got so much information. You cut, you bring so much to the table and I hope we're in a negotiation and you're like, yo, Dave, you got to pay me 70,000 to come speak. I'm like, dang, bro, you was just in the morning meetup. What you mean? You're like, I ain't got the time. I'm like, yo, can I give you 50? You're like, I need 75, Dave and me. I hope that happens. I'm looking forward to that. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.